Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We bring you greetings from the Christ Temple Holiness Church on this morning here in Oak Block, Alabama, where our pastor is a bishop, Kenneth Carter. We invite you to fellowship with us via Facebook and also on our YouTube channel, Christ Temple Holiness Church. And we ask that you lift your hands and praise and worship on this morning and be blessed in the name of Jesus.
nor standing in the way of the sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall not prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you on this morning, Lord God. God, we thank you for the ones that are watching right now, God. Have your way, God. God, move in the service, Lord God. God, we thank you for our mission, God, and our first lady, God. God, have your way in their life, God. God, just have your way with Christ Temple family, Lord God. Pray for the ones that are watching on the internet, on YouTube, God. Have your way, God. We speak a special blessing on them, God. God, we can we claim healing, Lord God. Pray for the ones that are in the hospital, Lord God. Pray for the ones that are at home, God. God, have your way, God. Let healing take place, God. God, we come in your knee and take God. Over our body, God. Over our mind, God. God, have your way, God. God, you, you're awesome, God. God, you're worthy to be praised, God. God, see your word, God. And it may heal, God. God, we see your word, God. And it may deliver, God. God, we see your word, God.
lips getting all the all the Marie families continue to keep you in prayer. Continue to keep you in prayer. God is so awesome. I thank him for for his his mercy, his grace, his love, and his kindness. Amen. Even in spite of God still deserves to be praised. Amen. Praise him with your lift up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. And give God praise, I'm telling you. In the gospel according to St. John, share a subject with you today. In the sixth chapter of the gospel according to St. John. In the sixth chapter, the writing of John. In the sixth chapter, starting at the 53rd verse, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in him. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard sin. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up? where he was before. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time many of his disciples went back walk no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? 
Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, I thank you. Bless your word, Lord. Give us understanding and revelation. God, we praise you. Thank you for you still being on the throne. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. It is something that's in this text here. How that John writes to to us and all those that are in his hearing and in his in the reading of this particular book. It is during a time when when here Jesus Jesus is sharing with his disciples. It is amazing because I think that everything that Jesus was doing was preparing them for when he would be crucified and preparing them for who would carry the gospel and who would still have determination and Commitment to to be to be one of the ones that would still be a a voice a voice for the word a voice for the word the word need a the word need a voice a spokesperson uh, ambassador one that would still speak on the behalf of Jesus after. The crucifixion after he has said it. So here he is because of some of the conflict that he has with the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the different ones that came against him. This is a uh, this is a this is a challenging time in this particular writing here when he writes to the uh, the, the disciples and conflict that he has with the Jews. It is amazing because when he makes the statement of him being has come from heaven and they understand in him being uh, Joseph and Mary's boy and a lot of them quite understand. It is amazing. I feel speaking by permission, and I feel that a lot of their misunderstanding was because of the fact that they're not having the Holy Ghost, not having His Spirit. The Lord has to really show and, and reveal Himself. And even now, you know, you have to really appreciate God's Spirit and, and His revelation, how He reveals Himself and show Himself through by infallible proof that He is who He say He is. I want to encourage you, and I want just to, just to give an encouraging word to you today, and I want to talk from the subject of uh, at the crossroads of possibilities. At the crossroad, the cross, the cross. It was at the cross. At the crossroads of possibility. It is something here because in this particular text, Jesus, Jesus begins to talk to them about, about eating his flesh and uh, drinking his blood. 
they they was really thinking from the mindset of him being from a cannibal cannibal listed cannibal listed standpoint you know thinking of a uh, human eating another human flesh and a human drinking a human blood he was thinking they in their mind he was thinking cannibal a cannibal listed thinking it is something because when he begins to share with them and tell them about eating his flesh and drinking his blood and he's the bread that came down from heaven he was really just speaking figuratively he was just he was just uh, of the atonement and, and talking about uh, the really the, the 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 importance of the cross the cross it was at the cross Jesus died on the cross and it was everything and you know he, he he took it he took all all our sins the sins of the whole world and he took them to the cross and so now he as he shares with them about the, the eating of my flesh and their mindset was from a carnal and a humanistic thinking not thinking from a spirituality perspective. And so they had, they were way off in left field of thinking that is someone going to actually eat somebody up you know, from a cannibal perspective. But Jesus was talking about the, the cross. They, they, they stumble, they stumble at, at, at the cross. They stumble because of misunderstanding the, the, the highs and, 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 and the power of the cross. And this is all that he was talking about. He was, he was talking about the cross of them, of what he had to do and, and how that, that him by him dying on the cross, he told him, you, you, you can be in me and, and, and whosoever eats my flesh and, and drinks my blood has eternal life. He was talking about the cross, the cross, the cross. It was at the cross. It was at the cross. Thank God for the cross. My God, he did it. He did it. He took it. And so when these, not only did the Jews, the Jews struggle with it because when Jesus began to talk about him coming down from heaven and he was the bread and how that the bread that healed, they would live in the manner that they, their fathers ate, they died. And so that once they eat of this flesh and, and drink of this blood, you shall dwell with me and you shall be with me. And so they, it was, it was hard for them to understand the, 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 the highs of the cross because the cross, the cross, the cross had some demands. They, 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 they didn't even understand not only the cross, but also the, the very provision of the cross. What, what the cross provided. Hallelujah. It is a blessing, my brothers and sisters, to not only know that Jesus died on the cross, but it is I, I can have some just some assurance and some confidence of knowing how powerful the cross were. The cross was a powerful object. It was a powerful symbolism. It was a powerful typology. It was powerful in the fact that of what Jesus did on the cross. The cross. And so for them to be thinking this way, they, they, it is amazing because when you really look at this text and you have to really, it, it is almost as if, and the Lord knew that 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 a lot of them would not understand, but he still made the statement. It is almost as if uh, that Jesus almost intentionally confused him. What do you do when Jesus confused you? <laughs> oh my goodness, it is something. What do you do when Jesus says something? And you don't even understand it because you can't, if he don't show it to you and reveal it to you, you can't even understand it. This was the case here because now the disciples and even the Jews, the, not only the Jews were struggling, but the disciples were struggling. 
they were struggling. They were struggling because of not understanding how powerful the cross, the purpose of the cross, and the provision of the cross. And so when he began to talk to them, not only did the Jews come against him, Sadducees and Pharisees, but this was a hard saying for his disciples. Because even his disciples says that, that many therefore of his disciples, when they heard Jesus talk like this, eating my flesh and drinking my blood, even they themselves wrestled with what Jesus was saying because and here the Jews was already thinking he was speaking from a cannibal perspective, cannibalistic. And now here are his disciples. They themselves. It was a hard saying to them also. It was not an unintelligent saying because it's Jesus that's talking. It did not have anything to do with intellectual ability because this is Jesus. It was, it was, it was a hard saying to them because, because the cross not only had high provision purpose, Some great demands. And so this was a hard saying because to the disciples when they heard it, because it was the cross that 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 introduces us to, to not only salvation. And it is the cross that introduces us to, to the cross demanding holiness. And the cross. And so it was a hard saying to them. And Jesus knew of the one that believed and did not believe because this was leading up to Judas betraying him. And he knew that Judas would betray him. And many of the this, when Jesus in himself began to hear the disciples, and he knew what the Jews said because they were already confronting him. But then when his disciples started murmuring, because this was a hard thing. Because the cross had high demands, my God, and it still have high demands. The cross calls for, for, for holiness. And the cross calls for submission. And the cross calls for being totally devoted to Christ. And the cross calls for being totally committed to the Lord. And so it was hard for them because of the demands of the cross. And so Jesus begins to talk to him and ask him, does this offend you? I, 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 I when you see the when you see the son of sin and he begins to talk to them and have a conversation with them. And he'd be within his omnipotent and omniscient power. He already knew who would leave. Yes. 
and who did not believe. This is a critical time, my brothers and sisters, because we are all at a crossroad. We are all at a crossroad of life because what it what it what it entails is that we are we are traveling down a road that we have not been before, and we are all somewhat at a crossroad. Some people are at a, at a crossroad of discouragement. Some people are at a crossroad of depression, not, not understanding and, 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 and believing how they are going to come out of this situation. Yes. And so now we are, we are all at a crossroad. And the adversary is trying to, to discourage all of us and to, to, to he would, he, if he had his way, he would, he, he, he would cause all of us to throw in the towel and, and to quit and to give up. And many, many of God's peoples are, are not, if you're not a faith person and not a student of the word of God and have built your trust and faith in the Lord, you are going to struggle during these times. And many people are somewhat struggling because, because of the fact of how not only we are experiencing the, uh, what we are dealing with in, in society from the coronavirus perspective, but then also we have to be aware of the attacks and the, uh, uh, the traps and the tricks and the traps of the adversary. And so now when we think about at the crossroads of possibilities, we all, we are all, we, you, 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 you got to, this was a hard saying to the disciples because this is a time now, my brothers and sisters, that you got to really have a made up mind. You've got to have your mind made up and, and, and be totally committed to, to, to the effect of the cross and to the working of the cross and to the power and the purpose of the cross. Yes. And so now he talks to his disciples because it would be his disciples, the 12. He, he begins, to, because many, many of his disciples, they went back. And they walk no more with him. Many of the many people are struggling, as I said, to really hold on because this is a time now is challenging folks. And there, and like I say, you gotta have the determination and 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 to be motivated by the fact that that if the Lord brought you through before, He can surely bring you through again. Somebody give God some praise. Uh -huh. And so he talks to his disciples, and since it was a hard saying, a lot of them, a lot of them went back because they could, they were not willing and ready to to, to deal with the demands of the cross. And it take it take holy living, my brothers and sisters. It take being sanctified. My God, to be a, 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 a not only a participant, a recipient of the power of the cross. The cross has some power, my brothers and sisters. And even even when they don't didn't even realize that when they was lifting them up, it was for the sake. He said, "If I be lifted up, my God, from among me is all men. I I will draw all men." So there there is some there is some power in the cross just by lifting up Jesus on the cross yeah. it brought about salvation because he began to say he took all of our sins all of our unrighteousness he took all of our foolishness he took all of our everything about us he took it to the cross oh, he took it to the cross and so here, a lot of the ones that followed him, they came to a crossroad, a cross road, a cross. Some of them made a decision on the cross as pertaining to the road. 
Because a lot of them was on the road, not because of the cross, but because of what they can get from it. You all hear me? They was on the road, but not necessarily for the cross. And they didn't even realize they was in the cross, at the crossroad of possibility because a lot of them were following Jesus because of what he can do for them. And when it got, when it got hard, They had to make a decision on the cross as pertained to the road. Because whenever there's a crossroad, the crossroad all the crossroad always lead to the main highway. decision with the cross. Oh my God. <laughs> they went back and didn't stay on the road. The Bible talks about there is a there is a highway in Isaiah and a road. And they call the they call the highway of holiness. Isaiah 35. It talks about it. And it's a wayfarer and it is a and we know it's a one way. And so this was hard for them because they was they had not made their commitment to the cross. Thank you, Lord. We're in a time now brothers and sisters that you just don't need to be excited about the road but you should have me more focused on the cross somebody give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah God is an awesome God and so now a lot of those disciples when they turn back because of not willing to deal with the cross, they was at a cross road. They was at a cross. Do I follow the cross or do I take another road? And some of them took another road away from the cross. But they're not willing and wanting to to be totally committed and submitted to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for the cross. Somebody praise him right there. Thank you for the cross. The eating of his flesh and the drinking of his blood was talking about the cross. in the cross that you and I are able to be saved and so many of them turned back because they were following him not for the purpose and the power of the cross but what was taking place on the road And so they came to a crossroad, deciding to choose the cross, the demands of the cross, or go and try to get to the main highway on a different road. I submit to you, wherever you are, that you stay with Jesus. Stay with him. I know it looks tough. And I know.
know we are experiencing some, some, some opposition and I know we are going through a storm and we are facing the COVID-19 coronavirus and everything else but I still have a made up mind somebody praise him right there I'm still determined to give God some glory I'm still determined to give him praise hallelujah and so as we look at this particular text, after many of them went back, Jesus began to talk to the twelve, the foundation. He began to talk to the foundation, twelve, foundation. And in, within the midst of the foundation, he knew one of them was a devil. And Judas would eventually betray him. And he already knew it. It is amazing. When he betrayed him, suicide, he was replaced. Because the foundation standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are healed. And we know that they are with the apostle doctrine and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone and everything is built on the foundation of the apostolic doctrine. And he began to talk to the twelve. The twelve. Because many of the other ones had left the question that we all struggle with now and a lot of people are struggling with it as I stated a lot of people are struggling with you know in actuality what is, what is going on you know and what and, and you're feeling opposition from from your jobs and society and everything they're talking about this and they're talking about that People are still out of work. Millions and millions of folks are still out of work. And they're talking about changing the unemployment and this and that. And companies are, are, are structuring themselves to lay off. And we are in the midst of everything that we are facing. The adversary is still trying to discourage you. But I thank God for the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah! I thank God for the victory. I know it may not look good. And it don't even feel good. But I still thank God for the victory. Somebody tell him, thank you, Jesus. And so, for that, you know, here he asks. Then he begins to look at the disciples. And he asked them, will you go back to? Will you? Because after many of them went back, he asked them, will you also go away? And now listen to Simon Peter. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Because if I leave the Lord, where can I go? And you have to ask yourself, if, 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 if it's what for Jesus, if I leave Jesus, who? Who can save me? Who can bring me out? Who can deliver me? And Peter answered him, shall we go Lord because Peter himself he he had first hand possibilities of the grace of God and Peter had understood the promise of being a partaker of his nature 
Peter knew that if I can just hold on, yes. I would eventually be able to share with him in the resurrection. Yes. Somebody praise him right there. This is why Peter made the statement and he stepped forward and said, Lord, uh, to whom where we go, you got, it is you that gave eternal life. And we believe that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And for that knowing and I can attest and I can testify my own self. And you gotta, you gotta believe it and you gotta know it and you gotta feel it. And you gotta say to yourself and let the devil know that there will not be no turning back. There will not be no turning back. I, I'm, I'm at a crossroad of possibilities. I'm, I'm at a place of God can do it yes. and keep you and God cannot do it and still keep you yes. hallelujah somebody tell him thank you right there so God is an awesome God and this is the case here for the, 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 the disciples because now the twelve Jesus knew a stated that who would betray it, but he wanted the foundation to be right because they was at a crossroad of seeing people lead and seeing people discouraged because of not willing to make the commitment. And this is where you got to have a made up mind, my brothers and sisters, especially in the day and time that we are living in. And the fact that it's that so much is going on, we're seeing, seeing wars and rumors of wars and famines and peasants and earthquakes in diverse places and even in the midst of them we are embracing for this hurricane that, that may dump a lot of rain and water and, and floods and cause problems but God still deserves to be praised. <laughs> We've got to pray for each other and to lift up the name of Jesus because the Lord is still on the throne. <laughs> Somebody give God some glory. <laughs> at the crossroads of possibilities because God will still make a way. My God, I'm at the crossroads of possibilities because when we all look back over our life, we can say that God has been good to us and he has brought us through some troubles and he has brought us through some trials and he has brought us through some tribulations and since we are at a crossroads, of possibilities. I'm going to stay on the Lord's side. I'm going to stay on the highway of holiness. I'm going to stay on the highway of righteousness. I'm going to stay on the highway of sanctification. I'm going to stay on the highway that will lift up the Lord. Somebody praise Him and give God some glory. If you are at the crossroads of possibilities, whatever Give God some glory. Whatever you do, give God some praise. Whatever you do, let yourself know that I'm going to stay with the Lord and I'm going to give Him praise. Somebody say yes. I've got to serve Him. I can't quit now. I can't turn around. We are all in a crossroads. Don't you first love me. 
the midst of what we are experiencing. And everything that you are faced with, you are at a crossroad of possibilities. Make the right decision. Stay on the right road. Because the, get, staying on the right road will lead you to all the realms of possibilities of what God is able to do. And this is where his disciples were. Some went back because it was a hard saying. But then Peter stepped up. He stepped up with his boldness. That's why the Lord used him on the day of Pentecost when he gave him the keys of the church. And they was all in the upper room. One place on one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from him as of a rushing mighty wind. He appeared unto them like as a fire open tongues and sat on them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit in the Methodist crossroad. Those that was blessed in that upper room, even his mother and those on the outside heard them as a witness speaking in their native language. God was filling and witnessing. Oh my goodness. All the same time. What a mighty God we serve. Give him glory. On that day, Peter, of 3,000 souls. The crossroad. Wherever you are, you may be at a crossroad and it may look tough but without a shadow of doubt Peter said to whom will you go away because it done got hard now when you turn back I don't want you to be like the ones that were just just following Jesus for fishes and loaves for handing out what they can get from him but I want you to be one that's concerned about the cross. Because now they are at a cross, cross, the cross road. Whether to be one as a spokesperson for the cross, a witness for the cross, or choose to get on another road. Stay in the church. Stay encouraged. I know it may look tough, but God is still in control. Keep on worshiping Him. Pray for you and your families that you will continue to magnify Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. My worship is. Because my worship, because my worship, my worship is real. Hallelujah. Because my 